Good day, McVeigh, and happy Tuesday. Good morning, boys and girls. Please stand to honor our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Boys and girls, you may be seated. All right. So let's get to our birthdays for today. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We had three days. All right. So today, happy birthday to Ekambir Singh in our third grade, Donovan Giordano in our third grade, and Emmanuel Coronas in our third grade. All three in our third grade. Okay. All right. So, boys and girls, today's Get Smart Show project is coming to us from Elin Olson. Green snakes. We've been learning a lot about snakes this year. We had Maddie Mazella's project on snakes. He did all snakes. Then we had, I believe, Caleb and Jerry had a project. I think that was rattlesnakes. Of course, we learned about my snake, right? And now green snakes. So I'm going to give you some cool facts that Elin has provided. And of course, you might be able to see that she did a wonderful illustration for us as well. So she says that you can find a green snake in a garden or a meadow. So a garden or a meadow. Hmm. Do we have gardens near us? Yeah. So this is the kind of snake that we might have locally. But of course, they're uh, garden style snakes and not rattle style snakes. These are little snakes. And green snakes lay eggs. How about that? And they don't guard their eggs. And boys and girls, when a baby snake is ready to hatch, they just break through the shell. Now that sounds a lot like another animal that I'm thinking about. But in that case, the egg is guarded. What animal are I thinking about where when the baby is ready to be born, it breaks through the shell? Hmm. See if you know that one. Hmm. By the way, when the baby snake breaks through the shell, they do it with a sharp little tooth that they've already grown. Pretty cool. All right. So, Elin, again, sharing some of her work on snakes. But what are you doing to get smart? If you're doing something, you let me know. I have a couple more projects for next week. I see one here um, by Emily Cardali about the earth. And Eleni Bonzalakis did one about Greece. Can't wait to share those. And I also have some cool projects that students are getting smart through art. So remember, Ms. Hoskin had those prompts. Well, here are some of the art work pieces that were handed in. So this is Sophia Bonilla in our third grade. And can you guess what this theme was? You're right, candy. Look at that, you have candy corn. It looks like lemon drops, lollipops, and my favorite, chocolate. All right, here's another one, Candy Fest by Connor Hines in our third grade. That certainly does look like a candy fest. Good work, Connor. He also has some chocolate, looks like some mints. And then this one looks like just Halloween in general. You have the pumpkin, the haunted house. Well done, Abiyan, in our second grade. So I hope that I will also be able to show your artwork on the Get Smart Show. Now, let's talk quickly about lunch. And speaking of lunch, today we have mozzarella sticks. It's one lunch choice. Another one is boar's head turkey and cheese. Grilled cheese or bagel lunch. Now, we're getting better at this, boys and girls. 
but I think we can still do even better than that. So imagine that you brought a sandwich to school today. Let's say it's ham. And now it's lunchtime. You have a ham sandwich because that's what you brought today. Well, that's the same thing as when you get lunch in school. Whatever you order in the morning, just like whatever you made that ham sandwich or whatever your mom or somebody made for you that ham sandwich, whatever you order in the morning is what you'll be having at lunch. When the lunches come to your class, you can't change your mind. Just like if you brought a ham sandwich with you today and you open up your lunch and you think, uh, I'm not sure if I want a ham sandwich. Well, that's what you have today. Now tomorrow it'll be something different, but when you make a choice in the morning, that's what you have to stick with. We can't go back and forth to get another lunch because we're not near the kitchen. We're in your classroom and we don't have somebody to go back and get uh, that lunch for you and it's not been made for you. There's nobody here to make it at that point. So, deal. let's really, really, really work on that. I also want to say how proud I am. I've been seeing that we're keeping in a perfect lines as we walk down the hallway. I'm super proud of that. I'm also super proud of how well you've been eating in the classroom in our new 50-50 when we half eat and half go out. Keep up the good work, boys and girls. And so finally, as always, we're going to end with our mighty kind moment of the day. Let's get a drum roll. Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna go to my bouquet here. Hmm. Are. Huh. Now this is an interesting one. So this is coming from Mrs. S, Miss Samantha, and she says, be the change you want to see in the world. Now, how can I explain that? Well, think of it this way. Suppose something happens and you're not really happy with it. You don't like it very much. The way somebody treated you, it could be, or the, the way somebody treated somebody else. What this means is, if you would like something to be different, then you should model that behavior. So you should be the one or one of the people that others can look for or look to, to see how things should be. And sometimes that's hard. So what could that mean here at McVeigh? Let's talk about the lunch. So you order a grilled cheese and then you see that it's pizza. And you say, oh, I would really like to have pizza. And you see that somebody else also really wanted to have the pizza. And you say, you know what? I'm gonna stick with the grilled cheese because this is what I ordered. That's modeling good behavior, the right thing to do. And it's the same way with being kind. Let's just say that you see somebody not being kind. What can you do? You can model or show the other person how to be kind. You don't have to say, hey, that's not kind. Nope. You can just show them what kindness is. So what Miss S is saying is, you can show others how the world should be by how you act. And that's true. You can. And we can do it every single day. And why? Because we are mighty minds. Not only that, we're mighty kind, mighty minds. And every day is a great day to get smart and be kind to both each other and the earth. Let's have a wonderful day.